there was one particular tree of which we were not to partake, a tree of knowledge. Knowledge and understanding and wisdom were forbidden to us. We were to be kept ignorant. But we couldn't help ourselves. We were starving for knowledge. Created hungry, you might say. This was the origin of all our troubles. In particular, it's why we no longer live in a garden. We found out too much, too much, too much. As long as we were incurious and obedient, I imagine, we could console ourselves with our importance and centrality, and tell ourselves that we were the reason the universe was made. As we began to indulge our curiosity, though, to explore, to learn how the universe really is, we expelled ourselves from Eden. To our ancestors, there was much in nature to be afraid of. Lightning, Storms, earthquakes, volcanoes, plagues, drought, 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 drought. Once we overcome our fear of being tiny, we find ourselves on the threshold of a vast and awesome universe that utterly dwarfs in time, in space, and in potential the tidy anthropocentric proscenium of our ancestors. ancestors. across billions of light years of space to view the universe shortly after the Big Bang and plumb the fine structure of matter. We read the genetic language in which is written the diverse skills and propensities of every being on Earth. We invent and refine agriculture without which almost all of us would starve to death. We create medicines and vaccines that save the lives of billions. We communicate at the speed of light and whip around the earth in an hour and a half. We have sent dozens of ships to more than 70 worlds and four spacecraft to the stars. Star, star, star. We are right to rejoice in our accomplishments. And to judge our merit, in part, by the very science that has so deflated our pretensions. Natural processes, collisional selection of worlds, say, or natural selection of gene pools, or even the convection pattern in a pot of boiling water, can extract order out of chaos and deceive us into deducing purpose where there is not. The meaningless absurdity of life only incontestable knowledge accessible to man. We're making a mess of our planet and becoming a danger to ourselves. The trap door beneath our feet swings open. We find ourselves in bottomless freefall. We are lost in a great darkness. And there's no one to send out a search party. We lack consensus about our place in the universe. There is no generally agreed upon long-term vision of the goal of our species, other than perhaps simple survival. Survival. The significance of our lives and our fragile planet is then determined only by our own wisdom and courage. We are the custodians of life's meaning. We long for our parents to care for us, to forgive us our errors, to save us from our childish mistakes. But knowledge is preferable to ignorance. Better by far to embrace the hard truth than a reassuring faith. If we crave some cosmic purpose, then let us find ourselves a worthy 